well, we're not going to be doing a great job with our designs for Fiber Channel if we don't even know what Fiber Channel is. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the Fiber Channel protocol, a lot of the foundational concepts of what Fiber Channel is and what makes it so special. If you're like me and you're coming from the traditional TCP IP and Ethernet world, then Fiber Channel is a little bit uh, challenging, I suppose, to try to figure out simply because it operates very differently from Ethernet networks. And so we need to start with what we know, but then also relate that to what exactly Fiber Channel is and what it's accomplishing. Either way, let's just dive in and see how this is done. The Fiber Channel protocol was developed exclusively to carry SCSI messaging. It's the only type of payload that Fiber Channel supports. So it was developed for storage networking, and we do spell it a little bit differently, at least as far as what I might be used to in America, because F-I-B-R-E, that would be the British spelling of Fiber Channel, and we use that to differentiate from optics. So if we see F-I-B-R-E, we're supposed to know that it's Fiber Channel, whereas F-I-B-E-R, this would be the American spelling of Fiber, uh, that is supposed to represent Fiber Optics. And that way we don't get confused between the two types of Fiber connections that we're talking about. Now, as mentioned, this is highly tuned for storage environments. This means that we're going to be focusing on what storage networks need. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on speed and reliability. We want to make sure at the absolute minimum that our storage networks are extremely robust, that they can handle individual failures, that they can handle misconfigurations, and that we're not accidentally taking down our storage network at any given moment in time. And we've talked about why, by the way. Uh, just as a quick recap, if we don't have reliable storage, this can result in some massive corruption. Our storage area network needs to be very resilient because even the slightest hiccup could actually cause mass corruption in our environment, which as we've seen before, might actually take down our entire data center. So it's very mission critical that we deploy a reliable storage area network. Now Fiber Channel is going to use its own protocol stack. It is not at all compatible with Ethernet. We're not relying on Ethernet or for that matter, by the way, uh, IP or TCP or UDP or anything like that. Instead, it has its own layers that are represented by FC and then a dash and a number. For example, like FC2 would represent the layer two of the Fiber Channel stack. As such, Fiber Channel follows its own frame format. It has its own header, and this header is 24 bytes in size. And then we have a payload that might actually include some optional header space here. So we actually have an, uh, 64 bytes for this optional header, we'll call it here. And then the payload itself, which is 2048 bytes. And so this is where our SCSI messages end up going. Now, oftentimes we'll actually see these two numbers combined. This actually results in 2,112 bytes. And we'll occasionally see this referenced as the, uh, I suppose call it the greater payload of Fiber Channel itself, even though it does include this optional uh, set of header information. Now, because it's using its own stack and its own set of protocols, we're not going to be able to use traditional ethernet switches. Instead, we're going to have to use our own set of Fiber Channel switches and Fiber Channel hardware in general. Now that said, let's have a quick sidebar conversation about Fiber Channel over Ethernet. Fiber Channel over Ethernet is when we take a Fiber Channel frame and we encapsulate it inside of Ethernet. The interesting thing about this encapsulation is we're not actually using any higher level protocols. So we're not using IP or TCP or UDP in this situation. Instead, we're natively encapsulating it into Ethernet and it's really meant to be a hop to hop type of communication. So between two switches, each running Fiber Channel over Ethernet. Now we're going to cover this in much greater detail later on in this course. However, just understand that FCOE is something that we might refer to. However, when it comes to native fiber channel, well, that word is exactly what I was going to explain, is that sometimes we're going to call it this native fiber channel concept. Native fiber channel is in contrast to fiber channel over ethernet, which means that we're not actually running it inside of the ethernet protocol. In other words, this right here, this is what we might call native FC. Now, as you might expect from the name Fiber Channel, uh, Fiber Channel Media is going to be built entirely on fiber optics. And so, yes, even though we differentiated the spelling, uh, really the two are synonymous in a lot of ways for that reason, uh, at least from the perspective that Fiber Channel will require fiber optics. That means we're going to be deploying on OM3 or probably OM4 in most data centers, although we might even see OM5 these days. And these are going to support the various speeds of Fiber Channel. Now, Fiber Channel has always existed on this powers of two concepts. So we started with one gig, and then we saw two gig Fiber Channel, and then four, and then eight, and then 16. However, these days in modern data centers, we can expect to see 32 gig and even 64 gig, at least on the most recent switches. Meanwhile, at the time of this video, 128 gig is actively being worked on, and it's probably going to be out soon. So we might expect to see 128 gig in our data centers very shortly. Now these optics are going to be installed into an SFP form factor slot. 
And so these do look a whole lot like Ethernet transceivers. In fact, they're really impossible to tell without looking at the part number because they have the exact same form factor as an Ethernet 10 gig transceiver or maybe even a 25 gig transceiver. Now, last but not least, let's talk briefly about the hardware and then we're going to go into a little bit more detail about the hardware later on in this skill. But as mentioned, it's not compatible with Ethernet and therefore we're going to need our own fiber channel switches. Now, Cisco has its own series of fiber channel switches and they call these the MDS switches. MDS switches still run NXOS just like our Nexus switches. However, as you can imagine, they're a little bit more focused on FC commands. And so we can expect to find fewer commands that are oriented towards Ethernet, like spanning tree and such. And instead, we'll find configuration for fiber channel zoning and these kinds of configurations. However, we can still expect to see things like config T. We can still expect to get onto interfaces and set interface uh, modes of operation. And so a lot of commands are still going to feel familiar to us when we're working on an MDS switch. Now switches are great, but what about the servers and storage? What about the nodes that are going to connect into our fiber channel edge ports? Well, they're not going to be able to use a NIC. A NIC is by definition, a network interface card for ethernet services. And so instead we're going to use a host bus adapter. The host bus adapter is a card that goes into our servers and into our storage arrays. And this is going to provide native fiber channel communications, just like an ethernet NIC produces ethernet communications. The HBAs are going to have a pair of burned in addresses, addresses that we call worldwide node names and worldwide port names. Each individual interface is going to have its own worldwide port name, whereas usually the card itself, which might have multiple ports, that is going to have a worldwide node name. And so it's sort of like MAC addresses in that we have these burned in addresses, but they operate very differently and we have two different types of burned in addresses on the card. But either way, we're going to install these HBAs not only into our servers, but also our storage arrays on the network. And they're going to connect up to, for example, Cisco MDS switches or whatever fiber channel switches we happen to have inside of our data centers. So fiber channel is a protocol that was designed for storage communications. It's exclusively going to carry SCSI messaging inside of its payload. As we saw, fiber channel is incompatible with ethernet. And so it's going to have its own set of switches that we deploy into our data center. And for Cisco, uh, that's going to be the MDS switches. MDS switches are capable of switching native fiber channel traffic. And as we saw, we're gonna need our own hardware and the hosts themselves as well, not just the host, but the storage arrays. All of them will use HBAs, host bus adapters, which have a different set of burned in addresses. Those would be the worldwide names that we discussed. I hope this has been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click here to subscribe to CBT Nuggets and click the notification bell to make sure that you're aware of every time we post new content. If you're interested in a career in IT or you wanna brush up on your IT skills, then swing over to our website and while you're there, be sure to sign up for a free trial.